Hello and welcome to the Love and Relationships revision video. Now I made this revision video for two reasons. The first is for students who've been following this course so far and we've walked through all 15 poems in detail looking at some context relating to each poet as well as key quotations to remember and what the poems mean. I think it would be really useful to have a general broad overview of exactly how this fits in when you're looking at the anthology but also looking at the key quotations and the general structure or rhyme scheme for each poem. However the second reason why I made this video is for some students who might not necessarily have the luxury of time to go through the entire video as well as the entire course and to go through all 15 poems in depth. You might be, for example, revising this on very short notice, you maybe have an essay due, or for instance, you have an exam coming up. So this video is going to be really useful because as you can see behind me, I have summarized all 15 poems as well as key quotations to remember. And I've kept these quotations quite brief, but still really, really relevant in terms of how you can use them across when it comes to comparing them with other poems, but also when you're thinking about quotations, because if you think about it, 15 poems are a lot of poems to remember. And if you even remember just the minimum of two quotations per poem, that's about 30 quotations. So you have to be very economical when selecting which quotations to go through. Now, what I'll do is I'm gonna walk through all the poems and what to remember for each poem for both your exams but also of course the video that follows on from this will be exam practice so you can bear these quotations in mind as I walk through all the different exam questions and then I'll show you how to effectively answer past paper questions. So let's get started and we'll start with When We Two Parted which is the poem that kicks off this collection. Now this poem is written in an A B A B rhyme pattern and the key quotations to remember for this poem in particular are firstly silence and tears and that's sibilance that you can use for that one and share in its shame and again that's sibilance but these two quotations really encapsulate the message of this poem now let's move on to the second poem in this collection which is love's philosophy and in terms of rhyme scheme it has an a b a b rhyme scheme and in terms of the quotations to remember for this poem the first is fountains rivers and oceans this is the natural language that's used to show that if nature works in a certain way where it works in pairs also the love should also be divined by god to be between those two people and of course the second quotation that follows on from that is when the poet states law divine again this is his justification to the person that he's trying to woo that their love is only natural and also deemed healthy by god the third poem to go through is Porphyria's Lover and this is the third poem in this collection and it has an A B A B B rhyme scheme and the quotations to remember from this poem are sullen ellipsis vex the lake and this is pathetic fallacy which essentially establishes the really negative tone of the poem and of course the second quotation is three times her little throat around and this describes the speaker's killing of his lover and of course here also we have alliteration which emphasizes the violence of this killing now the next poem is sonnet 29 which is the fourth poem in this collection and in terms of its form it is a sonnet so just bear in mind that it's a sonnet and the quotations to remember for this particular poem are thoughts ellipsis do twine and bud and this shows just the speaker how obsessed and how in love they are with this person and the next quotation is the repetition of thee they keep on talking about this person who they're in love with and the third quotation is rather renew thy presence and again that's alliteration now the next poem in this collection is neutral tones by thomas hardy and it's written in a quatrain structure in other words that means the poem in each stanza has four lines. Now in terms of quotations for this poem, the first is winter day, this is the use of pathetic fallacy, this sets a really dark and moody atmosphere to the poem, of course this is about the end of love. The next quotation is alive enough to have the strength to die and this is oxymoron, alive contrasted with death and of course this is the speaker's way of describing their lover's smile. Now the next poem in this collection is Farmer's Bride and it's written in free verse. In other words, free verse means that there's no set rhyme pattern. It's written with a very general kind of structure. It's not necessarily structured in a really predictable way. Now, in terms of quotations for Farmer's Bride, the first is Frightened Fay, and you've got the alliteration of FF. And of course, this describes the young maiden who's just been married, just how young she is. And it's a really diminutive language to describe her almost like a baby creature. 
The next quotation is her eyes, her hair, and this is what ends the poem and it shows perhaps that the farmer is becoming really obsessed with his bride and he wants to close that distance, maybe he's going to rape her. Now the next quote, the next poem is walking away and the structure is A, B, A, C, A and in terms of quotations from this poem, the first is wrenched from orbit, this is describing how the speaker who's a father feels like his son who's having, who's becoming older and older he's been wrenched away from the structure of the family and the second quotation is half-fledged thing and this kind of creates a sense of pathos within us as we see the son walking away but perhaps to a very scary world outside of himself the next poem is letters from yorkshire and this is written again in free verse and the first quotation from this poem is knuckle singing to describe how the speaker's friend who lives in the country is writing to them and is really excited in what they're writing about which is the start of spring also the next quotation is feeding words on a blank screen this describes the contrast between their friend who's out in the country they are doing work very manual labor which actually impacts people in terms of feeding people because they're a farmer however in contrast the person that's speaking wonders whether the work is meaningless because all they do is office work they're just typing in things and the third quotation is air and light and this is to describe how they feel as they open the letter from the country and from the friend in the country and how they really feel that there's so much promise and hope within this letter now the next poem is Eden Rock and here in terms of Eden Rock it's written in five stanzas however do bear in mind that the last stanza the line is separate from the rest which obviously indicates the separation of the person from his parents who've died and have gone to the afterlife now in terms of quotations the first quotation to bear in mind is genuine Irish tweed this is describing his father's appearance is very masculine in appearance and very domineering and the mother is described her hair the color of wheat which kind of gives us an idea of the mother looking really angelic and the final quotation is in the last line which is separated from the final stanza crossing is not as hard as you might think and of course this is a euphemism to show how crossing over into the afterlife dying is not necessarily something to be afraid of now the next poem is follower and the structure is a b a b rhyme scheme and the quotations are firstly globed like a full sail this is describing the narrator's father when he was younger how strong and how powerful he looked and this is in contrast to this next quotation which is tripping falling yapping which shows the reversal in role so as the poem starts the narrator is quite young and they feel very inept next to their very powerful father however by the end of the poem the narrator is the person who's the adult the dad has almost reversed into infantile behavior because he's very old and you can't look after him and he's the one that's tripping yapping and falling after him and this also so tripping falling and yapping that's rule of three in terms of technique now the next quotation the next poem rather is mother any distance and this is written in free verse and in terms of quotations the first is unreeling years between us this describing how the mother is helping the speaker move out but also as they are um, reading out the tape and measuring everything actually this is also creating distance between them and physical distance because they're moving out now the second quotation is end the sky to fall or fly and this ends the poem and it shows how the the future seems quite promising but also there's always the threat and the downside of being alone in this new world and they could perhaps fall however we get the sense of mother any distance that the mother will always be there for them no matter what now the next poem in this collection is before you were mine and it is written in four stanzas of five lines each so it's very very structured now the first quotation is Marilyn and that's written as just one sentence on its own so just Marilyn and you've got Cesura there because it's got a full stop now this describes how glamorous her mother was before she gave birth to the speaker the next quotation is Clara sent and this simile essentially shows how the speaker can vividly recall their mother and the third quotation is the mother is stamping stars and that's a useful uh, sound sibilance and it shows just how full of life and how vivacious her mother really was. Now the next poem is Winter Swans 
And in terms of Winter Swans, it's written mainly in tercets, which is three line stanzas. However, the final stanza is a couplet. So it goes from three lines, perhaps the three lines could represent there's an elephant in the room, there's something that's causing them to be unhappy with each other. However, when it ends as two, cup, two lines, which is a couplet, it shows that maybe they have now joined and united as one and they've set aside the differences. Now, in terms of quotation, the first quotation is clouds have given the all, which essentially is use of pathetic fallacy and also a metaphor to represent how the two people who are arguing they've given the all to the relationship and maybe the relationship is going to end. The next quotation is like a pair of wings settling and this is towards the end of the poem where essentially they look at the swans and these swans are a metaphor for the need for unity and they somehow reconcile the differences. Now the next poem in this collection is Sing Song and it's written in free verse. Now in terms of quotation the first quotation is one of my dad these shops and remember in terms of how it's written it's written phonetically it's written how the speaker pronounces it and we can ascertain that this speaker is perhaps of Indian descent and maybe they have a very strong Indian accent so how it's written is it's written according to the accent it's written phonetically now the second quotation is the worst Indian shop on the whole Indian road and this essentially is showing how the speaker who runs one of his father's uh, corner shops for instance has become really distracted he's not very good at what he does and we learn that the reason for his distraction is because he's just become newly married and he's really obsessed with his wife and the next and the final quotation for this poem is tiny eyes of a gun now this is a metaphor to describe how the wife who is married is really unlike what one might assume of a very traditional very docile woman actually she's very very sharp and this is a really interesting metaphor to show how maybe the narrator is in love with her because of how fierce his spirit is now the final poem in this collection is climbing my grandfather and in terms of structure do you remember it's written in free verse and it's in one long stanza and this stanza could perhaps visually represent the mountain it con contributes to the metaphor of this child who's climbing his grandfather and maybe discovering their grandfather now in terms of quotations the first is do it free without a rope or net and this is using the extended metaphor of the child climbing a mountain to describe how he's climbing his grandfather and discovering him and learning more about him as he gets to know him and uncovers all these secrets the second quotation is glassy ridge of a scar this describes how the grandfather of course is much older but perhaps he used to engage in manual labor he's someone who used to be very hard working and this is something that the speaker admires and the final quotation is just good heart which essentially shows how the narrator really admires and loves the grandfather so that's it when summarizing the love and relationships poetry and the key quotations to remember and i hope you found this video useful when it comes to your revision thank you so much for listening